This, oh, uh, there we go, is the Ace Magic Mini Gaming PC. And in today's video, we're gonna be using this to build my dream gaming setup, which I have been wanting to do on this channel and for you guys for such a long time. This is gonna include running Steam as well as Step Mania so that I can finally put my DDR pad to good use. I'm gonna also test it out in a few other ways as well, but the real question becomes, can this gaming PC that is under $350 really run all of this stuff and actually become my dream budget gaming setup? Well, let's find out. Here is how the mini PC comes. And here is everything that it comes with. You've got an instruction guide, you've got a bracket, you've got screws for the bracket, I assume. You've got an HDMI cord, you've got the power cord. And then of course, you've got the PC itself, which is smaller than my hand. <laughs> Insane. Let's go set it up. Ugh. All right, so for my ultimate gaming setup, I need to first set the thing up. But as I'm doing that, I wanted to show you around this little mini PC so you can see what ports I'm gonna be working with. I was actually pretty surprised when I opened this up how many ports there actually are. So on the front, you've got the power button, you've got an audio in, you've got two USBs, and then you've got a type C. But you flip this around, and then you've got four more USBs. You've got the LAN port where you're gonna put your ethernet cord into. You've got your DP and HDMI connection back here. This is of course the port where the DC plug goes in, which is already in. And then you can see on both sides that you've got really good cooling. You can see the fans on each side. And then you can also see there's a little crack up top all the way around. And then you've also got the bottom part where you can mount it with the screws that we got. I'm not gonna be mounting mine. Mine's just gonna sit right in here. But it does have those two little holes if you do wanna mount it somewhere. Otherwise, if you're gonna use it like me, you've got these little soft pads on the bottom where it's gonna sit. Okay, so the mini PC has Microsoft Windows on it, which is going to start up and set up the same way that you would set up any Windows computer. So let's just skip to the part where I start turning this into my dream gaming setup. So first things first, I need to download OBS Studio because I don't know if I'm gonna game in the future, but I want that on here. Also, I wanna record the screen while I'm going through all of these program downloads because I don't want just a camera on the screen like this because I know it's hard to watch. All right, awesome. So I have OBS Studio downloaded, so it's now recording my screen. Hopefully you're seeing my screen a lot clearer now. This background sucks. <laughs> So I really badly want to get something that more closely aligns to a gaming setup. And one of my favorite games of all time is Tomb Raider. All right, I'm digging this black and white one. All right, cool. So now we've got a cool Tomb Raider background. Let's move on to downloading the actual programs. So for this build, I wanna download a collection of programs that I think will make my gaming setup exactly how I'm imagining. And if you wanna create something similar, just follow along. First, I'm gonna download Steam, Epic, GOG, and maybe a couple other programs. And between all of these picks, I mean, I can find everything from like giant titles to like weird little indie games, so. And even some free stuff. Next up is Step Mania, which I'm gonna use with my DD. DDR pad. If you're not familiar with DDR, Dance Dance Revolution is a dancing game that was in like every single arcade in the late 90s and early 2000s. Super popular. One of my favorite games I used to play as a teenager and I still do as an adult. I'll also of course be downloading some song packs too to get started. Now, I definitely wanna play some old school console games too on here, so I'm gonna download RetroArch, which is kind of like a universal emulator. It can run games from systems like, uh, you know, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, and 64, all of those good ones, all in this one program. All right, so now that we've got my PC filled with all of the programs that I wanted on there, now comes the fun part. Let's go play some games and let's test this little mini PC out and see if it can actually run these games. Shall we play a game? Oh. All right, so now that we've got everything downloaded, I hooked up my Xbox controller straight to it. And of course, Windows immediately recognized this as an Xbox controller, so there's no need to download any drivers or anything. First in our gaming test to see if this PC can handle it, I'm gonna start with the lowest hanging fruit, which is obviously playing an old video game, like something on Sega. So after downloading RetroArch, I downloaded a Sega pack, and we're gonna pick a random Sega game to play. Arrow the Acrobat used to be one of my favorites back in the 90s. Let's go with that one. Sweet. Heck yeah, getting that moonwalk across Sunsoft. Well, the music is a little messed up, but, uh, but the actual gameplay is perfectly fine. Let's try one more game on here. Got a bunch of games on here. Oh my God, Battletoads. I love Battletoads. It's messed up too. I don't know what's going on. If you guys know why the sound is messed up, let me know down in the comments because 
I'm assuming it's just a bad ROM, but I have no idea. Oh my god, I love Battletoads. Get out of here. Well, so far it can play rudimentary Sega games, which is a good sign, because if it couldn't do that, this would not be a good gaming setup. Let's move on to something a little bit more difficult and let's jump into Steam. Oh man, I've been playing PlayStation 5 for the past like year and a half, so I haven't even touched Steam in so long. You know, Hogwarts Legacy was one of the reasons why I stopped playing on my other PC because it was kind of laggy. If it can play Hogwarts Legacy, I'm pretty sure it can play anything. So since we got the background as well, we are also going to test out Tomb Raider. These games are taking forever to download, so we're gonna plug an ethernet cord in. So far the fans seem to be working pretty good. It's still not very hot. And all right, Tomb Raider is finished downloading. Let's see if it works on here. <laughs> Seems a little bit laggy. I know it's like on like the highest settings. All right, now we're getting to the actual gameplay. All right, so with all of the max settings on for Tomb Raider, it is pretty darn laggy. So we're gonna change the quality to low. I'm gonna lower the resolution down from 3840, 2160 down to, let's try 1600 by 1200 and see if it works. Oh, so much better. Okay, so it can't handle max graphics on games, but if you just lower it a little, it's gonna work fine. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, I can't even tell a difference between when I played this on PS5 a few months ago and when I'm playing it here. A lot of the times when it's on max, you may notice it, I'm sure on like an 8K TV, but you're not gonna notice it on a 4K TV like I have. And I mean, it's still good graphics. So far, it's playing really, really well on those graphic settings. I'm very curious about Hogwarts Legacy. So I forgot that I had to deal with this a long time ago when I played on PC. It has to prepare the shaders. And this part kind of scares me because it says, depending on your hardware, this may take a few minutes. Hogwarts Legacy has now finally loaded, but as I thought, you can tell already the background is lagging because it's probably set on like the highest settings. So first things first, we need to change those. Yeah, it is super laggy. Oh no, don't make me claim rewards right now. It's going too slow for all this. No, not another reward. Another one? Surely three is the max. Another reward. 20 rewards later. We're definitely gonna press Y because this is so laggy. All right, so Hogwarts Legacy did not work on this mini PC. I even downscaled it, but for some reason, the way the controls are built within that game, it just kept minimizing the screen and I couldn't full screen it without it going right back to the original resolution, which made it really hard to move the mouse around. So anyways, Hogwarts Legacy was unplayable. So that sucks, but we do still have another game to try out, not on Steam, but the one that I'm most excited about, DDR, or rather, Step Mania with my DDR pad. So let's set that up. Dance, dance, revolution. All right, DDR pad is all set up. Now Step Mania is loading all of the games that I've inputted and I put like over a thousand games in here. Obviously I'm only gonna show you a couple, but I'm gonna be playing this a lot more if this works well. And while this is loading up, if you guys wanted to get your very own DDR pad like this, I will link it down below. It's from LTech. It's one of the best companies out there making DDR pads still that are like arcade level. So anyways, I don't get any kickback from that. I'm just gonna leave a link down below if you wanna go and get one. I am so pumped. All right, we'll play Around the World on Medium. Well, I got an A on that. So for DDR, works pretty good. Oh, all right. With all the gaming tests done, there's only one last thing to do, which is to give my final thoughts on this mini PC. New high score. What does high score mean? New high score, is that bad? All right, so final thoughts on this mini PC. Well, 
First of all, it is a great standalone PC. If you're just using it for work or home or the internet, this is gonna be perfect. It also plays 4K video really well. Also, as you saw during the test, it plays DDR pretty flawlessly, as well as all the old emulators that I got. However, saying that, it does struggle on a lot of the newer games. I either had to lower the resolution way down, or like with Hogwarts Legacy, I just couldn't figure out how to play it at all without it lagging a ton. So overall, and my final thoughts on this mini PC, it's really good, but it's not gonna be my entire gaming setup, but rather just a part of my gaming setup. Specifically, it will act as my official retro arcade, where I'm gonna have all of the emulators set up once I download them, as well as a million DDR packs so that it's my official DDR and emulator station. But for the newer games, I'll probably keep those to my newer gaming PC or of course my PlayStation 5, which is what I mostly play on. Now I'm gonna keep you updated on my gaming setup as it evolves through time, but if you would like to get this mini PC for yourself for whatever kind of build that you're creating, if you think that it fits your needs, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below as well as a QR code here on the screen, just in case you're on desktop, so that you can pick up your very own PC. Now right now, the version that I have with the specs that I showed you earlier, that version is currently below $300, but as I'm recording this, it is Prime Day, so it may be a little bit more than that when you go and find it, but still won't be the price of like an all new PC for like eight or $900. And having said that, please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video at all, and let me know down in the comments if you own this PC or what your thoughts are on it, or what you would maybe possibly use this mini PC for. And also, if you'd really like to support my channel in like a big, big way, there's a thanks button down there. You can click that, donate money, and most of the money that I get in through there just goes right back into making videos like this for you. I'm Eric, this is Eric's Tech World. I'm gonna throw a video right up here of something that the YouTube algorithm thinks you're gonna be super interested in. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.